Hi everyone, um, let's just have a quick example on how to find the breadth on how to find the breadth of a T-section. Okay, this is a T-section as you know and uh, I mean even this one since it's an intermediate beam. So we're going to do one example on a T-section and then uh, we will move on to uh, an L beam so that we can work out the flange width. And if you just take a longitudinal cross section along this beam um, what you'll get is something like that all right so you have the span here and here and here so this is an in span as well as this one here and this is an anterior span so um, the first thing that you probably need to do is the simplest one which is just calculating the contraflector distance so um, since we are dealing with RCC floor plan and um, since that as per the euro code you only need to um, multiply the effective span by a factor of 0 0.7 for all the spans uh, I mean it doesn't really matter um, irrespective of what kind of span you are dealing with so this is the end span and this is the anterior span and that's the cantilever we don't have any cantilever so we don't need to worry about this um, this is for the hinge support, so we are not dealing with any kind of hinge support. Uh, so we go with this one here, the most common kind of rigid structures. So we start, we take this one and we work it out, we get this value. Remember, we, what we have here is the effective span, we don't really have uh, the clear span. So this one is going to be as the same as this one here. and since the span is a bit larger than the others too, um, it's going to have um, a relatively larger value here. So that's how to calculate the contraflexure distance. Now let's just assume that we have a BW of 350 millimeter for all the widths of these beams. Now let's just change the view, okay, to an isometric view and what we are like viewing right now is this side of the beam okay so um, this is what you are going to get if you just change the view and it's better because you'll need to work out the all the b's okay since i'm referring to eurocode 2 then that's what it gives me um, b effective equals to bw plus sigma b effective i uh, this should be less than or equal to b so the simplest thing that you can do at the very beginning is to find out the b okay the b is something very simple i mean it is just the limit of the flange that cannot really exceed it if you take a look at this diagram you'll see that b runs from here up to here so it's the mid of this point or this panel up to mid of this panel okay so that's that's the B. So the first thing that you can work out here is finding out the B. So I'm just taking 5000 over 2. So that's the midpoint plus 6000 over 2. So what I get is 5500 millimeter. So that's our limit. Okay, now we move on and find that. Next, we need to find the B effective I. So B effective I is given by this equation. Um, B effective I equals to 0.2 BI plus 0.1 LO. We already have LO, the contraflexure distance. So what we are required to find out or to work out is the BI. Okay, BI can be B1 and B2. Okay, so um, in order to find the B1 or the B2, you simply need to find, as you see from this figure here, the B1 is the distance from the mid point of this panel to the edge of this whip so so I can simply just put 2b1 plus bw equals to the effective span since uh, what is given in this example is the, f is the effective span not the clear span if this was the clear span then you don't need any bw here so 2b1 gives you 5000 for this side 5 5000 minus 350 this is the 350 and um, you'll get 4650 that's the clear span now we have the clear span but we don't need the clear span we just need half of it 
So uh, we just divide it by two, we get this value here. That's the B1, okay? We do the same thing for the B2. Um, just subtract and then divide it by two, you get the B2. So B2 is for this side and B1 is for this side. If you get to solve it with the same effective span, then you'll, you just need to solve it once. Uh, there's no need to do B1 and B2 since you have the same effective span. All right, we move on. So B effective I, which can be B effective one, equals to 0 0.2 times B1. So we already have the value of B1 and that's plus 0 0.1 times 4,200. So since we don't have the same value here um, for um, contraflexure distance, since we are dealing with um, since we are dealing with this continuous beam and it really doesn't have the same span along each beam so um, we just take one by one or we can just simply take the end spans since they have the same value and then we just separately work out the interior span so we are dealing with the end spans so uh, that's what we get so b effective one equals to 0 0.2 times the b1 plus 0 0.1 times the contraflexure distance and you must check it with this limit, this one here and this one here. So this one simply says that uh, there's a factor of 0 0.2 times the contraflexure distance. And what you get here should be less than or equal to this and this one here as well. You usually don't have to worry about the B1 since it is a bit large. And um, what you must check with is the 0 0.2 LO. This can get smaller as in this example. So we'll check it with this one and this one as well. So if you plug in the values there um, in this equation here, you'll get this value. But as I said, you'll have to check it with this and this one here. So if I check it with this one here, I'll get a value of 840 millimeter. And if I check it with this one here, it is a bit large, so I don't really have to worry about this. So um, I have this value here and I have this value here. Which one would I take? you always go for the minimum. You always go for the least number. So um, you just simply go for the 840 millimeter since this is the minimum value. So we do the same thing for B effective two. And for B effective two, we're gonna use the B2, which is this one here. All right, for the B2, uh, we just plug in the same values and we'll check it with this limit. Once you put the numbers there, you'll get this value here and you'll have to check it with this limit. And this limit gives a smaller value, so you go with the limit, 840. We just need to add up all the values. So we have B effective one, and we have the BW, and we have the B effective two. So you just put it in the simple terms, and you get this value, 20, 30 millimeter. That's the effective flange width. But remember, you'll have to check it with B. Okay, the one we found in, at the very beginning, which is this one here. Um, this is a quite this is quite a large number so you don't have to worry about this um, all right now we're done with the end spans we go for the interior span and is it is just exactly the same way you have b effective i um, we have b effective one and then we have the same b1 uh, but a different contraflexure distance. So that's that's the difference between this one and the one we had previously. So um, you just put the numbers there again, uh, you get this value here, and you'll have to check it with the limit. Uh, but this time the limit gives a larger number. So you go for the B effective one for this one here. And it is 955. So that's the B one, this one here. And then you go for the B effective two. Uh, you just do the same thing. This is the B two. Um, that's the contraflexure distance. And you get this value here. And you'll have to check out the limit. The limit gives a smaller value. So you go for the limit. So you take the limit uh, since it is the least number. And uh, if you go to the original equation, uh, you have all the values there that this is the BW, so this is the BW, we already have it. And then there is the sigma B effective one plus B effective two, so um, that's what I do here. That's the 350 BW plus, nine plus 955, which is this one here, 
plus 980, which is this one here, and then you get this value. Obviously, it gives a larger number there. Um, you don't have to worry about that. That's, that's our flange width. If you're gonna view it on a plan view, this is the end span, and this is another end span. They have the same flange breadth, all right? And it is logical that you have something bigger here since you have uh, a bit larger span. So we just go on and solve for an L beam. All right, so we are not going to take a continuous beam. Uh, it is exactly the same procedure. So um, for the L beam, it is a bit, it is a bit easier. You just need to work out one B effective. All right, that's the only one you have to work out. And simply for the contraflexure, it is always 0 0.7 times the effective span since we are dealing with the rigid structure with fixed kind of support system. And then we just substitute for the B. Remember for the B, it is this limit here. So, uh, so it's simply 6,000 divided by two. This is the limit of the flange. It cannot go beyond this limit. Okay, we get the B here. So um, we work out the B effective one and simply 0 0.2 times B1 plus 0 0.1 times the contraflexure distance and you'll have to check it with this limit. All right, now we have to work out the B1. So uh, simply 2B1 equals to the effective span minus 350, which is this one here, and then it gives you 5,650 millimeter. That's the clear span, okay? That's the clear span from here up to here. But we don't really need the entire clear span. We just need half of it. So we divide it by two, we get this value. And then we simply substitute to this equation. This is the B1 plus 0 0.1, 3,500, which is this one here. Uh, if you put these numbers there, if, if you put the numbers there, uh, you get this 915. And if you check it with the limit, the limit gives something smaller. So you go for the limit. Again, again, go to the original equation, just substitute you have 350 here the bw plus b effective one the one we already worked out and then you get 1200 millimeter so that's our effective flange breadth you have to check it with b um, this is quite big so uh, you just leave it there and you take the b effective all right if you're just gonna view it on a plan view uh, this is what you get uh, that's our L-beam and that's the flange breadth or the flange width.